Hi, what is up YouTube? Thank you for tuning in. This is a follow-up video on the Seagov Android head unit that I've installed last time. I will link the video on the top right corner if you want to check it out. And I will go through what I think are very good about this head unit and what I think can be improved on it. So we're gonna start first with the look and the build quality and as you can see it looks really nice. When you compare it to the stock head unit, it's just day and night. This looks a lot better than the stock head unit. And it's also Android based, so you have your Android apps, you have access to the Play Store, and you can install all the programs as you would on an Android tablet. So as you can see, I already installed a few uh, programs. Android Auto works as you can see works both through cable and wirelessly it also supports apple carplay so unlike some other aftermarket head units that do not support steering wheel controls this one works fine as you can see here volume up down previews and next tracks you have calls and so on so you can also remap these buttons in the settings if for some reason they do not work and also the climate control uh, knob also displays the temperatures on the screen when you uh, turn it which is also a nice touch it also supports computer input devices like mice and uh, keyboards so if for some reason you have to connect the mouse and a keyboard to your car's head unit you can do it here I know it's a little bit ridiculous but yep it does support that I haven't tried a gaming controller but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna work as well so if you're into gaming on Android it's gonna work perfectly here so you can get your fun time on during breaks I also found using the mouse very handy because if you're into TV shows and movies you can kick back and then launch your Netflix. Enjoy the streaming. In addition, all three USB connectors support both data transfer and charging you can connect a flash drive a hard drive and play your downloaded movies offline or you can also run android auto or apple carplay through these connectors you also have a lot of settings to play with as you can see here your car settings extra settings driving settings along with your factory settings that i wouldn't recommend messing too much in because it's a uh, password protected there is no way to reset the settings after you change them so if something goes wrong you're gonna have to go back here and change it back to what it was so i only recommend changing anything in here if you know what you're doing yeah you also have your regular car settings your uh, amplifier your subwoofer if you have it your speaker controls and all the jazz So opening a door will show the status on the screen as well as the trunk and the hood if your car supports them. And now when it comes to the home screen customization it's kind of disappointing because you have your panel right here. You can change your wallpaper. You have two images to choose from or you can select one from your head unit. And you also have a widget panel as you can see here but uh, these are completely useless for me because it's just that I cannot put them on the home screen so you have a bunch of them but you cannot put it wherever you want you have to put it all the way on the end pages where you install your applications the default tiles cannot be overridden so you're gonna have to put it all the way at the end which just defeats the purpose of it being a widget you can also access your settings from here as you can see and then you have a control settings app I had the head unit for a little bit before I find this one out these are basically uh, quick settings that you can turn on and off uh, regarding the car accessories 
really handy be mindful when you mess with the factory settings because it's really tricky now let's talk about the customer support I've had a good customer support experience because I've had an issue with uh, the GPS compass along with the radio information not displaying on the gauge cluster so I got in contact with them and uh, solved the issue so as you can see here when I navigate to the, uh, the radio information page this is what it's supposed to look like but in my case I have nothing it's left empty and I had to contact them for that along with the GPS compass also because on the gauge cluster it's supposed to display the uh, the compass as you can see on the screen this is what it's supposed to look like and this one is also left empty so they made me this com decoder and told me to swap it out with the old one so I reopened the head unit removed the old one installed the new one and just like that I was able to display the radio information as you can see here even the compass is now displaying from the GPS module so unfortunately the compass is not dynamic it's not able to detect when I go east south west or north so I just let that go but uh, still a very nice customer support it was indeed uh, the com decoder that was the problem I also had a few hiccups when I first installed this head unit because I was having an issue with uh, the Play Store freezing after I tried to search an app as you can see here I tap the search bar and the second I try to type anything it just stops for some reason and also when I pull down the notification panel sometimes it just freezes but these were not a big deal I updated the firmware and everything went back to normal next you have driven more than two hours please take a break I have no idea why this pop-up notification is persistent and there is no way to disable it at least that I know because I've searched in the settings a way to disable this notification and I was not able to do so so if you know how to disable this please let me know you're gonna have people who travel a lot in their car and you should not be stuck with a notification that you have to dismiss every two hours it's really annoying so the next one is related to the screen's brightness I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to see the screen dim because of my automatic ISO settings but it does get bright enough especially when the light theme is applied but I wish that it got a lot dimmer than this because if it's at night it does uh, look a lot brighter so I ended up applying dark theme so it's a lot easier on my eyes especially in the dark especially at night so yeah this is great but uh, I also wish they had an automatic settings that you can check just like on Android so it does get dimmer or brighter depending on the uh, environment but that's something I guess they can update let's talk about the Bluetooth a little annoyance that I found here is when you scan for devices and you find it you cannot just click and connect to it you have to wait until it's done scanning I think it's better to make it possible to just click on the device I want to connect to and tap connect regardless of if it's still scanning for other devices if that makes sense the screen is also a tiny bit fingerprint magnet but you have to look at it at an angle to see it I don't think it's a big deal I don't know if there is a screen protector for it but I don't think it's necessary other than that the screen is gorgeous really bright and sounds great especially if you activate the bass booster in the amplifier settings I really like this screen I like to watch movies on it and most of the things that I think can be improved on it can be done through future software and I believe Sega will do so and yeah go ahead and let me know in the comment section what you think about this upgrade and if you have any question also leave it below I'll do my best to answer thank you for watching guys and I'll see you on my next video